Hey guys, Low Waffles here. Welcome back to another Maple Story video. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the Phantom Forest area of the Mysteria region, which has recently been revamped. Now this video was going to come out a lot sooner, but I was unsure whether I should make a video about this area while there are a lot of complaints regarding certain mechanics of the Phantom Forest. I talked to CM Ghibli about any changes being major, but according to her there's not going to be anything content changing yet as far as she knows. So we're going to be taking a look at the Phantom Forest area of Mysteria, the new dailies, items that you can get here, and trying to answer the question of is this worth sinking your time into. It should also be noted that since this is fresh content, some of the information in this video can possibly change. If this does become the case, I will be making this video unlisted and re-uploading a public Phantom Forest guide with updated information. So before we actually get started with this guide, let's first take a look at some of the items that you can get from doing Phantom Forest, starting with Moe's Coin Shop. This shop houses many of the old items from back then, like Stormcaster Gloves, Crystal Leaf Earrings, and even the Raven Weapon series, and while the stats on them aren't that great compared to something like CRA and Absalab, they are aesthetically pleasing. This shop is also home to the Mysteria Grandmaster Scroll and Legacy Scrolls, which can only be used on Mysteria Legacy equipment. You'll be able to purchase majority of the Mysteria Legacy accessories from Fiona. Taking Taking a look at the set effects, it's honestly pretty decent, but there are two major problems. The first problem is the cost, as not only does it take 13 days to farm up 100 coins to purchase the accessory, but it also for some reason costs Shadow Knight coins in order to Star Force it. A player calculated that on average it would take roughly 10 years in order to get an accessory to 22 stars, and that's not accounting for early Star Force failing. The second major problem of going for this set is what you're trading it for, which is the Superior Golok set. I wouldn't recommend swapping swapping over or even attempting to go for the full set, as it's nowhere near worth how much time and resources it's going to take. If you do somehow get it to a decent amount of Star Force, however, the Glona's Heart Ring will beat out a solid Golux Ring, but that's about it. One thing that should be noted though is that unlike Golux, you can actually purchase the accessory as many times as you want. Alongside Fiona and Mo, if you defeat an elite boss of the Phantom Forest, you'll also be rewarded with 5 reward boxes. These reward boxes are how you'll be able to get Black Aid equipment, some other nice rewards and a 30-day Lorraine's Wish. You'll get up to 3 boxes based on how much damage you deal, the player who spawns the elite boss will automatically get an extra box, and the player who lands the finishing blow will also get an extra box. The Black Aid accessories also have a pretty decent chance of being unique potential when you pick them up. And do keep in mind that you can only receive reward boxes for the first 5 elite bosses just like how you can only participate in Infernal World 5 times a day. Now that you know all of the different rewards that you can get from doing Phantom Forest, I'll leave you guys to decide whether this is worth your time time or not. For me, since I have plenty of time on my hands, this is definitely something I look into, as Blackgate rings sell for a pretty decent amount of mesos in Aurora. Upon hitting level 170, you'll gain access to the NLC area, but you won't actually be able to start the Phantom Forest questline until you're 180. Surprisingly, you don't need to complete the NLC questline to gain access to this either. You can start the questline by talking to Lita Lawless, and if you move fast enough, you'll be able to finish the questline in less than 15 minutes. Just keep in mind for the last quest, you'll be required to get to the Crimson Wood Mountains. You can get here by going through the top right portal on the first map, and then keep going through the farthest right portal until you reach the first climb. From here on, it's just simple jump questing. For those of you who have access to mobility or utility skills, you'll definitely want to use them to get past the totems, as they will one-shot you if you touch them. You can use the minimap in the top left of your UI for reference as to how tall the totems are, and stay above them. After climbing up the mountain, enter the middle cave on the first map, and from there, it's straightforward. By completing this final quest, you will gain access to the daily quest for Phantom Forest, which will give you Raven Ninja and Shadow Knight coins. But before we talk about the dailies, let's first talk about the Phantom Forest area itself. This area is almost like a maze with how similar the maps are, and while you transfer between maps or take enough damage, you'll start to gain a bit of sanity, a mechanic that is unique in the Phantom Forest. You'll start to slowly gain more and more sanity, and eventually, your character will start having these weird effects, like screen shakes, spooky ghosts, flying hands, just to name a few. And if your sanity becomes super high, the spooky ghost and hands will start to attack you. Dying in the Phantom Forest will also give you a bunch of sanity, so be careful. To get rid of your sanity, you're going to need to talk to Garnet either at the base or via the golden light bulb, though do keep in mind that you can only do this three times a day. Now I did mention that this area was like a maze, but to be honest, that's the least of your concerns. Elijah, also known by his alias Aldu, created a layout of how to navigate through the Phantom Forest. I recommend keeping this image for reference when you are doing activities here like your dailies or elite boss hunting. I'll be leaving a link in the description. As I said before, once you complete the questline, you'll gain access to the daily quest. 
Three of these quests will give you Raven Ninja coins, while the other three will give you Shadow Knight coins. By completing all six of these quests, you'll be able to obtain eight Shadow Knight coins and nine Raven Ninja coins every day. Now, in terms of the quest difficulty and speed, the Wante quests aren't that bad. You can refer to the world map or use Aldu's map guide in order to navigate to the mobs you need to hunt. The same can be said about two of the three Elite Hunt missions as well, as they should spawn while you're working on your Wanted quest anyways. However, the hardest quest and the main reason that the community struggles somewhat is because of the last Elite Hunt, which actually requires you to defeat an Elite Boss. Now on paper this doesn't sound so bad, but then you realize that there are three different types of Elite Bosses that can spawn in the Phantom Forest, and you have no control over which one spawns. I would recommend giving this last Elite Hunt the most attention, as it is the hardest quest out of the six that will be given to you every day. Try to communicate with other players when it comes to this, whether it be between your guildies, alliance members, buddy chat, or even on Discord. This way, you might be able to get this quest out of the way as soon as possible, but this strategy works more effectively on populated servers like Vera and Reboot. So what about the other less populated servers? Well, if you don't see an elite boss spawning as fast as you'd hope for, the best thing that you can do is cut your losses and try to capitalize on the first boss that you encounter. Obviously, when you do your daily quests, you actually have to accept them, but don't do this. I would actually recommend holding off on accepting the quest until you encounter an elite boss. If the elite boss is the one you need for your daily quest, then everything's fine. Just accept the quest and move on. However, if luck doesn't work out in your favor, you may attempt to swap out the elite boss quest in hopes that you get the correct one. Branching out is for the giant phantom tree, Till Death Do Us Apart is for Killian and Lafay, or Headless Horseman if you prefer that name, and the Undescribable Terror is for the Phantom of Narakane. I said this before and I'll say it again, I would try to get this quest out of the way first, as it is the hardest one. Spawning elites is pretty tedious, and it's only made worse by the sanity mechanic. As of right now, I can't tell you what map everyone's using for elite boss hunting, but I would assume that it's one that's closer to the base, as those maps are easier to get to. And even if you don't need the elite bosses for your daily quests, you may still consider stopping by in order to get those free Blackgate equipments five times a day. And I hope from the bottom of my heart that you get lucky and don't take 10 years to Starforce that ring. For me, I'm doing daily quests on two different characters at once, one for purchasing the ring and one to crush my hopes and dreams on the spot. <laughs>